Beyond. Beyond. We oh, said it at the same time. Intentional. You want to do that okay, again? No, it's great. It. Hold on. So, I no, we're, we're going to back it up. Yep. Beyond. 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 Hey, we hey, did it. It's right. Beyond. Welcome, everybody, to my <laughs> podcast, Beyond, episode 541, Jeepers Creepers. That's a high number. My name is Max Scoville, and I'm joined today by Lana Pierce hey, what's up? and Brian Altano. Bruh! And we are here to talk about the games for the PlayStation Entertainment System. It's a good system. Of which there are several. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've yeah. made. Uh, they've announced that there are more of them. They're continuing <laughs> to make them. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. There's. We're starting to get into that territory where there's little murmurs of things that are going to be coming out at E3, but... Nothing really exciting to get too riled mm-hmm. up about, so there will be some speculation down the road. The pre-leaks. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the, <laughs> the <laughs> premature leakage, as it's known. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, in the Why meantime, did you do that? I had... I call the pre-leaks. You call the premature leakage. It's way worse. I just wanted to, you know, really bad. to just sort of flesh out the terminology in case no, people no, didn't understand your opinion. Premies, flesh in that. No, all of this needs to stop. Yeah, it's, it's all gross. Yes. <laughs> Give it a uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh... Alana, you played Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I did. I played it for about 45 minutes. What would you like to know? So, Lara Croft is back once again, correct? Yes, Lara Croft is indeed back. Actually, in a kind of cool way. They have uh, costumes that look more like her original, which I like a lot. She's got like combat gear, like kind of the tight-fitted blue shirt and the combat pants and stuff. Mm-hmm. So she looks like kind of more like old-school Lara Croft, which I like a lot. Um, she also has... Because it starts off, the demo that I played starts off in Mexico and you're going through what I imagine is a day of dead ceremony. Mm-hmm. There's fireworks going off, there's loads of people, there are people who are celebrating, people who are mourning at graves. It's very dense. Like there are, there was a lot on screen. Sort of like uncharted marketplace dense? I kind of want to say a little bit more. Like I was wow. very impressed mm-hmm. by how dense it was uh, and the frame rate still held up except for in an opening cinematic where it was really choppy. When I was moving it was great. That said... It is weird playing this game after God of War because it doesn't look anywhere near as good as God of War. So that was my noticeable. Gonna be, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a, a problem. That was my in. number one question for everything. I mean, this is not a year with an Uncharted game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even a year with a Naughty Dog game. I assume we're not getting Last of Us 2 at all this year. Yeah. I think it's, it's way too early it's for that. It's got to be next year. But God of War is a big one we all just played, and I think it sort of took a lot of the best stuff that we loved from those games mm-hmm. and crystallized it into something that was damn near perfect. It um, was weird playing it after having played God of War. Um, but it is, it's definitely still a Tomb Raider game, and you know, there are things that, the puzzles are very different to the way they are in God of War. I think one of them I found even more challenging than probably any of the puzzles in the series. Have you played them? The Tomb Raider games? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys yeah, yeah. both finished yeah, both yeah. of them? Yeah, I think okay. I practically, I almost 100% of the last one, I did the one before, and Miranda Sanchez, who was doing our guide, I came up to Wanted her. Wanted to die. Yeah, and I, she was like, <laughs> I love this game. I don't want to 100% it. And so I was like, like, should I? And she talked me off. You had to find like, all these clay pots on cliffs or something? It was like a bunch that. of nonsense, and yeah. the payoff wasn't really It was yeah. easier in the first one to one. Yeah. It still feels like those in that, I guess the stealth gameplay is pretty much the same. Controls the same. Camera's the same. Uh, I think the the biggest changes are it's so an example is you're going into you're in the jungle now so everything wants to kill you right even when you think you're alone there could be an animal there that's going to just like go in and you up so it's like kind of a bit more aggressive and it feels darker and Lara reacts to that in an interesting way and in that like one of her stealth moves is to cover herself in mud like Rambo style and then like really? hide in bushes so she's like up against walls just covered in mud wow it's like kind of shimmying to try and you know, kill multiple people. It's very predator. So, very cool. So, yeah, like to back this up a little bit, the setting is this is it's Mexico. Yes. And it's all kind of Aztec. At least apoc- the part I've Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it, it ventures beyond Mexico for sure, but it's all South America basically. Okay. And I'm I'm like weirdly really excited for this just on the basis that I like that I like that palette. Like yeah. I like palm trees. I like jaguars. I like I'm kind of happy to go back to that almost like that Far Cry Three type of setting yeah. or Uncharted One, I guess. No, same. Uh, I, d- I I think I dig that more than the sort of like the woodsy stuff we've seen or like the yeah. Snow Peak Mountain mm-hmm. stuff, which I I do I do dig that too. But this is this feels more adventurous to me. I think it's it's part of escapism that I look for in video games. In that like I don't know I can go to Mirror Woods where you know Endor took mm-hmm. place mm-hmm. in 45 minutes in a car here in San Francisco. Uh, whereas that's a that's like a, a lush tropical ju- jungle is a very non-American setting exactly, for me yeah. personally. I'm excited about the architecture too. You get the big, you know, yeah. Aztec pyramids and in, all that. In yeah. terms of like wildlife, I think the last game did a really cool job of introducing um, wolves that would kind of swarm in packs out of nowhere. And then yeah. the bears felt kind of more scripted, like they were based on specific areas where you fought them. What Did did you encounter like random animal attacks in, mm. in this game? Like, what kind I would of- say it wasn't random, I don't know, but uh, I was attacked by an eel. An eel? Yeah, it was pretty scary. 
in you the, in the water? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a, a, a land deal. I don't know. That's a great. I think land that might be deal. called a snake. You never heard? Of, you never heard of trills? <laughs> uh, live in trees. It was actually them. one of the things that I also really like that ties into this darkness theme is uh, a part of it where you're swimming underwater and you know you have to worry about drowning and you can see where there are air pockets because there'll be bubbles below it. So you see the next air pocket and you like desperately trying to swim towards it and it's like it was very very tense, feeling like she was going to drown and I felt like mm. that for a long time. That's and then, very Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> That's not what I expected you to say there. That's okay. what he does. Yeah, yeah. yep. It's like dun, 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 and very it Sonic. Up, yeah, and he goes, okay. walk, walk. yeah. A lot of people think that Sonic's defining mechanic is running, but really, no, drowning. it's drowning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He drowns so well. Um, no, I think that uh, this is this is going to be an interesting game because it's coming out in a year that's already packed with a lot of like really huge releases. This is coming out right around Spider Man and uh, Red Dead. Uh, a lot of people are going to be fi- fixated on that, but at the same time, it's also this is the third one in this in this fr- in this series, mm-hmm. and so. We're not going to be getting like they're not completely over overhauling it and reinventing mm-hmm. it. This is it's the end of this trilogy technically, right. but it it does feel very different in that I think this is the first one where she's had real character development. Okay, just based on what I played in the previous ones, Lara is very reactive. She does things because she feels like she needs to as a result of what's happening to her. In this, she is causing the things that are happening. She's the one who's the <laughs> she's the one starting the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. She's she's impulsive and not really thinking things through and there's this uh dialogue between her and friend jonah who i believe was in rise of the tomb raider Mm -hmm. um it's the only character whose name you can remember other than chloe i think is one of them i don't even know uh where nate she's (laughs) Sully. (laughs) sully she uh says something along the lines of like i have to do this i have to be the one to do this i'm the only one who can do this and he's like no you're a narcissist why does it have to be you you idiot like you don't have to do this like slow down let's help these people stop running away and like ruining everything and ruining these tombs and deserting everyone and she's like i don't know she this is definitely her darkest storyline in a way that it feels like everything she has done has finally paid off and she's kind of become a monster and she's like obsessed with the feeling of like accomplishing more than everyone else, knowing really, more than everyone else. I'm getting kind of like Last of Us vibes from that. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm into it because uh, that's the thing is it's that same kind of Indiana Jones problem where it's like if you just if you like show up and you break a bunch of stuff and you punch people and then steal steal mm-hmm. stuff like you're kind of a jerk. Well, I think so Uncharted, that, 4, like, yeah. Uncharted 4 handled that really well in terms of like you, you had a lot of conflict in really rooting for Nathan Drake because you're like you're driven by selfishness. Mm-hmm. You're driven by your motivation for something and while you believe it's inherently good your family is basically like please stop he also has this like boyish wonder is the thing with him i think that makes nathan drake really likable is that he's just like his his passion for the idea of discovery and excitement for learning about history whereas with lara it's just like no, it has to be me. I have to save the world. I'm the one who has to do all of this. It's always me. Sure. It right. also there's, he's there's, not quite that bad. There's never any like confusion about Nate being kind of a scoundrel. Yeah. Uh, and also, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Uncharted Four addressing his character was almost almost more ass covering than it was like actually following through. Whereas with, with in the case of Tomb Raider, she starts out as this like you know college girl on an adventure, and then she has to kill a deer, and she's like crying about it. And mm-hmm. there's this level of like you know kind of sympathy and you're kind of you're experiencing these these horrifying scenarios you know she has to crawl through a cavern full of blood and skulls and stuff and she's like oh my god get me out of here i really, I really wish like that scene was reacts. in the movie by the way the blood the blood cavern yeah skulls. i wish that was in there yeah yeah it wasn't um but yeah no I'm, I'm happy to see them kind of revisit the just like take that character and be like hey maybe this isn't a good character maybe i mean it's it's kind of uh Obviously, I think people are going to, you know, wonder why we're comparing it to God of War, aside from that being just the most immediate thing. But revisiting a video game character who we've kind of always accepted as like, oh, yeah, they do this stuff. It's a, she raids tombs. It's a God of War. They're, you know, these very kind of archetypal video game protagonists. But then to actually kind of like take a look back and be like, is that good, though? Should should you be like that? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing that God, of, that God of War sort of asked the question to us about was sort of like, what if you took this kind of brash, idiotic 90s, you know, buff man guy but the reality is is that a lot of video game characters across all genders were not that great back then and so she sort of had a very kind of thin backstory mm-hmm. i mean there was some cool stuff in there like i i i think that like when she thought sought it out she wasn't really even a character yeah that's no, that's yeah. a good way of putting it she yeah. was kind of just an avatar yeah, that, pretty much you know, you know, I mean that's that's a lot of video game characters, right. and that's Especially okay. Back then. You know, yeah. that's that's just a sign of the times. But a, the sign of the times now is that things are growing and developing, and now entire teams of writers work on projects like this. So, if they do start to humanize her more in both a good and a bad way, and you sort of maybe even find some resentment with her, uh, yeah. and then there's an arc there. I think there's something to be said. Like I, I don't think it's just 
it's not just men that were written dumb in the 90s, basically. Yeah. A lot of women were like not great video game characters either. So I think let's like if we can look at video games now and help them evolve and grow and writers can do that. And I think we're at a point where this is what players want more of as well. Yeah. And it's a part of that is the industry's growing up. So, you know, gamers are getting older. The people who started when they were 10 are like mm-hmm. my age mm-hmm. now. Right. And it's it's everyone's growing up with them. It's like, yeah, I, I want to be emotionally invested in the characters and I want to have a story told to me. And oh. I, I want to say that. Though she's a jerk, uh, she doesn't feel like a completely different person, and I don't think she's unlikable. It's a logical progression, then. Yes. So, so it's um, not like she's off-putting. So to back this up, uh, what's the this? So the setting is like kind of jungles, and is it kind of the same open world thing as we got in the previous games? Not that I saw, but I imagine so. Okay. But I didn't. I didn't get to see any sense of it being open. What I did was very linear. Okay. Very like you have to go exactly here and go exactly here. Gotcha. Exactly Interesting. Here. But of course, it's a very contained demo. So sure. Yeah, I Do don't you... actually know. Do you feel like it's going to hit its target for this fall? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I did also encounter a, a demo breaking bug. <laughs> and they came up to me like, oh, yeah, you found the only bug left. Congrats. And it's like, cool, thanks. Like, I couldn't do anything. Because right, right, right. So Interesting. That was a concern, but they clearly knew about it. But, yeah, I, I do think it'll be out in September. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's September is a good time for this game. I would say and Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I mean that's that's where I mean, the problem is. Games are getting bigger, and there are more people playing them, and it's hard to play all of them. It's true. Well, I would have thought August might be about a call. For yes, them, but yeah. Mm-hmm. August would sort of be like what Far Cry did with God of War, you yeah. know, which was get ahead of something right ahead that of was going to take all the air out of the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really September at least beats Call of Duty. What we Red imagine Dead. will be another Assassin's Creed, Red Dead. I mean, there's a lot of big... I think they're taking a break on Assassin's Creed this year. Really? Well, yeah, they would have announced it by now, I, think I guess. They, I think they are, yeah. yeah. Really? I think this is... that the, Interesting. They, they said it was a statement like we're planning to develop more in Origins rather than jumping right into another game. Oh, interesting. That or makes a lot of sense. Like there is, but there of course, some I could have changed. That's very I just assumed it was they were just right back on the, yeah. the annual cycle. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, so yeah. back to back to Tomb Raider. Um, Alana, you were saying, do you think, do you think you're going to play this? I don't think I'm going to play this. I, I like it, and uh, I'm excited about it in a way that's like I'm very interested in what you do here. But with the landscape of video games this year and the amount of things that I have to play, the thing that gets me is that it, it feels so similar to the previous two games, which I liked but didn't like enough mm-hmm. to want to play mm-hmm. it a third time. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are super invested in Lara Croft as a character, mm-hmm. and so inevitably people are going to jump on this and check it out, and I think that it, it'll be a great game to kind of come back to uh, I think it will be a good video. Game. Yeah, no, like, totally. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not even they've, questioning. Yeah, they've no definitely question. proven that at this point. And I mean, but yeah, it, it, it's that it's that same problem that I sort of had with with Far Cry Five is that like I've the, the mechanics of this I've kind of done before, and like once you kind of sort of notice the pattern of of puzzles and I structures, I feel and things, like I'm crazy. You know, like I didn't want Mass Effect Andromeda when they announced a new Mass Effect. I was like, no, 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 I love that trilogy. I don't want a new one, and I, mm-hmm. I felt insane for that, and I I felt the same way kind of with this series, and that. It makes sense to close off the trilogy with mm-hmm. this, but it's, yeah. it's like I I appreciate it and I'm sure it's going to be good, but I don't feel the need to play it. It kind of so makes Far Cry is exactly the same. Right, like right. I've, I've done that a lot. Yeah. I mean, in the in the case I of Far Cry though, it's it's always sort of reinventing itself and being a new character in a new setting. Different in the place. case in this in this case, it's like you been. know to have like a continuing story of Lara. Um, but it also, if they do commit to this and like ending the trilogy, obviously this is a, a incredibly valuable character. She's a yeah. of course yeah game character. So. There are new mechanics too. Like there are, the swimming is different, and you can now rappel downwards, which I not nece- that I necessarily enjoyed it, but it means the level design is definitely mm. very, very different because mm-hmm. you have to adapt to the idea that players can go down and swing now. So they can you basically like chuck in your pickaxe and then you swing down on a rope and you can swing to different areas. That oh, okay. Like, that it is, like it is pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, I feel like, would have been very difficult for them to design. Mm-hmm. So things have to be designed very, very differently based on the fact you can do that. So that, I think, will probably influence the world quite a bit. Yeah. It's, it's weird how all these games are taking baby steps to get to an area where their characters can climb at probably 50% of the kind of freedom and interestingness that something like Breath of the Wild has. I know, and it's still so hard. Weird. Even in God of War, it was hard. It was like, yeah, well, why I mean, can't I climb that? I'm a god. Yeah. Why don't I just jump over it? Yeah, I mean, God of War is an amazing video game that also has a couple, like, two-foot-tall invisible walls. It's still a video game. It's yeah. a video game. Yeah. Um, I will say that I'm definitely going to play this game, um, but I imagine that it won't stick with me. 
like the last two have. I mean, there's mm. nothing really... I think that they are in the moment really fun, really interesting video games. I enjoy getting into the areas where they're kind of open and hunting. I enjoy upgrading my weapons and tools. That's like a really fun thing that I think um, Far Cry kind of lacked for me. It, mm. it removed all the sort of hunting gathering stuff mm. and just made it sort of this like do everything you can to get enough money to to buy a gun thing. Right, right. Um, so that said... Uh, I don't really know if this is a game that will stick with me towards the end of the year. Like this game, Actually, when it I feel like it will, like, you think so? Just based on the the theme, I feel like it will have more of an emotional impact than Rise had on me. At That's least. good. And That's it depends good on the person, of course. But yeah. I like if I do end up playing it, which totally depends on what else I'm playing at the time. Mm -hmm. um, like if there's nothing else that I'm playing, sure I'll play it. But I, I feel like. I'm already interested in this, and if I don't play it, then I'm gonna look up cutscenes mm -hmm. because right. I want to know what happens. To I mean, I, th I think it's a problem that like that there are three people here, and none of them can really name many of the side characters. I, in those games. I think that's a problem. I mean, I, I can name everyone in God of War. What's the name of a best friend in the first one? I said Chloe, but that's you're absolutely right, and that that's just the, the Uncharted girl. Carly. Alex. I I can't remember. Alex I don't know. Right. That was like five years ago. I know she exists. Uh, no, I think it, I'm. I'm very curious to see how this does, and also like I'm 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 interested in it, but at the same time, it's also I'm wondering if this is going to have the Arkham Knight problem, where like I mean it has like sort of a similar structure. The first the first you know the first Tomb Raider, very much delivered on the promise of like hey here's a here's a well scoped action adventure game. You run around, you're Lara Croft, you fight deer. It's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one was like okay here's that bigger more of an open world. Where do you go from there? You know obviously adding some verticality helps and a new setting and a new story and everything, but like. I'm wondering, like Arkham Knight for me was sort of like they already pulled the, the open world trick with with Arkham well, what City. If we, what if we give you a tank? Yeah, does Lara Croft get a car in this? She gets a, a spider tank. Yeah. It'd be weird if she just had like a Subaru, <laughs> just drove around in the jungle. In the something. tombs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, I, I'm. I mean, Batman's kind of my exception because I love that world so much, and I yeah. love DC villains so much, sure. and I love Batman so much that they could make a hundred of those and mm -hmm. play it every year. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's the problem with with the third entry in in, in sequels. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always you're like, wow, you really did it with the second one. You're gonna you, you're gonna triple it this time. And it's I mean, like, that doesn't, exactly doesn't happened with that. Uncharted, right? Yeah. It was like the second one was amazing, but I think they they brought that back with four and that four was different enough and i think that that does unfortunately hurt tomb raider it's like well you are competing with uncharted 4. right the other elephant in the room is uh horizon has come out has come and gone mm -hmm. since then and that has a lot of similar elements to the gameplay of, of the modern tomb raider games yeah um yeah there is you know there's hunting and there's an open open world element and i wonder I, it's going to be interesting to go back to it and see how that feels and if i'm just immediately like oh yeah i'm Lara croft this is fun again or mm -hmm. you know if it's sort of like oh i've done this before i'm i'm okay for now so yeah it's interesting because the movie came out a month or two months or three years ago. I'm not sure at uh, this did, point. Did you like it? Um, I thought it was totally fine. Like it was a totally serviceable, like Saturday afternoon on an airplane movie. Uh -huh. You know, not the kind of thing I don't really think about too much. It, I didn't really try to think about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I think it did a serviceable job of doing whatever they could with whatever they were working on based on whatever they had. Yeah. Which is about as much praise as I can dole on it. Yeah. Um, and it, it had some moments where it like really echoed the video games really well. But I mean, ultimately, like to make a great Tomb Raider video game, I think the gameplay is solid. I think it's it's there. I think that you have to make her more interesting. And I, I like that you know the what you're telling us here about like her conflict is mm -hmm. more internal nowadays, and or at least or at least she's being called out. Yeah. On who she is mm -hmm. and she's not a hero and she thinks she is and, and that seems I hope that she has conflict and realizes that she's a jerk so then the the sort of the strength of the video game will come in how fun that loop of, of combat and hunting gathering is um, how cool the set pieces are how interesting the environments are um, because I don't have any faith in the side characters or the villain being anything that I truly care about the villain I like he's very likable um, from what I had seen, he's very nice, and I feel like... That doesn't sound like a very good villain at all. <laughs> well, but in a way that is related to a film that we may have seen recently. Tomb Raider. Interesting. He's, he's like, has a motive Walton that's like, Goggins. I can almost relate to that, mm. but also, that's bad, but gotcha. I like you. Does he yeah. want to kill half the planet? Anyway, um, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's move he on purple? here. Uh, so that's... <laughs> I don't know. We, Alana, you've got a full written written uh, preview up on, on IGN. So mm -hmm. if you're curious about Tomb Raider, go check that out. Um, 
we're getting a brand new Red Dead Redemption trailer this week that is coming out Wednesday. Uh, IGN is doing a full sort of live pre and post show. Uh, so if you want to get properly hyped up about that and also wake up early, uh, Wednesday, May 2nd, we're doing that 7.45 a.m. Pacific time. That's 10.45 a.m. Eastern or 3.45 in the afternoon here in the UK. Uh, what do you think this trailer is going to be, guys? Got to be gameplay, right? Yeah. 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 Also, Barrett, can we bring up that first image again? The red one. The red. I think I heard him just in the background go, uh, d- d- is that, there it is. Does it, I feel like it looks like Marston because of his weird lines on his cheek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, yeah. I could be totally wrong, but I feel like it looks like Marston and maybe he's in the, I don't know. But anyway, this has to be, uh, we've already had the character reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the setting reveal. This has to be gameplay, Western shootouts, cover systems. I really hope. Hunting. I hope it's like they did the the trailer for. It's like Welcome to Los Santos or whatever, mm-hmm. where it was just here is here's the breakdown of the mechanics and the world and all the stuff. And it was oh, just, the one that had that, that narration that sounded like yeah, like a yeah. robot woman, which was and Max and I watched Welcome to Los Santos. Yeah, Max and I watched that trailer the other day, and it's super weird because uh, that was so that was the first one that was like oh, yeah. the, the tone piece kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. the first GTA tone piece that sort of showed all the different things you could do in that game. Um, both uh, makes the game w- look way more sort of interactive than it actually is and also doesn't really do it justice in terms of what you could actually end up doing in that game. Like mm-hmm. it you, it makes you seem like you can just sort of like during the main campaign just buy into real estate and like play tennis on your roof and there's a lot of sort of like incidental stuff that's happening around the city right. that you don't necessarily directly engage with. I mean with they had, they had like a yoga mm. studio in there yeah. in the first trailer and then you're, there's you know there's a yoga mini game but it's not like a huge part of it and there is real estate but it's not like you're buying a home and like moving yeah. into it. I mean not, I guess there's sort of a part with that. Not to like, not to undermine barely. GTA 5 yeah. in any way because it is one of the yeah. most vast it's and interesting. It's literally interactive. the most profitable entertainment product yeah. ever made. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and in terms um, in terms of the yeah I know <laughs> the fledgling indies over there. Uh, in terms of what you can actually do in that game, it's near endless, especially right. with GTA Online. Especially I mean, now I yeah. think that this this Red Dead trailer is going to be the first thing that we see of this game that actually gives us an idea of what it's like to play it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really appreciate how Rockstar does sort of do these reveals. Um, I got to do when I think they were first showing off GTA Five. I had an appointment with them. We went and, and they were like, "All right, here's here's one of the heists. Here's how it works." And it was it was really cool to to show us the tiniest corner of, of a massive open world and to just be sort of like you'll get to see the rest of it on your own time and it was it, they're also so good about just kind of hiding stuff mm-hmm. and like leaving that level of like discovery for the players as opposed to being like all right here's a sick overview of our entire open world we're going to jump around locations and show you our fast travel system and just turn you loose uh instead they're just like all right so here's um you know here's like an area of downtown we're going to do that and it was like the the one that was in the trailer with the armored car robbery or whatever and it was so just, do you think that this preview or this trailer will be them showing us like a mission, or do you think it'll still be like a montage of things like that? I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be like a montage. I mean, it's also it's stupid to be speculating like this, but um, it's I think so it's. Close. I, I think it's going to be showing us like the very kind of basic mechanics and sort of breaking down on what you're what you're doing, and maybe some more insight on the setting and the time time period and everything, and just mm-hmm. and kind of confirming some of the stuff we've all been going back and forth about. Is but, there anything oh, you guys particularly want from the gameplay in this one? Um, I mean, I want I want to know more about sort of destructible environments, stuff like that. Like, sort of I, the thing is with these games is that it feels like such PR speak, like such a cop out to say. This, but the world is a character and that's that sounds like the stupidest like you know back of the box pull a bullet point but the reality is like it really is and with a lot of open world games i feel like that's sort of secondary to the gameplay gameplay in rockstar games is solid it's always been i don't think it's ever been like extraordinary but it's it's damned solid across everything mm-hmm. you're doing and so watching how that character or your character interacts with that world i think is really important i think that's something we haven't seen so much of yet the the kind of defining thing about rockstar games kind of since you know since i was in high school was you can go do blank you yeah. can do this. And it's always like your friend on the schoolyard being like, I mean, I remember in 10th grade metal shop, my friend being like, yeah, you can like, you can like go and like, you get a nice car and you like, you like pick up a prostitute and you can like drive around. If you like park the car, like the car starts bouncing up and down. I'm like, you could do that in the video game. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah. You can go bowling now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I, like I so. want to see those mini games. Like the, they had the horseshoe throwing, like yep. dice, like all the pub games, you can gamble. Like I want to see all that stuff. Yeah. Which I know is like a weird thing. It's like, I, surely this, the gunplay will be very similar to GTA five. And mm-hmm. I'm cool with that. Yep. I would like to see, um, they have a trademark, the slow time mechanic. What is it called? 
Rockstar have red, it. Dead eye. What is it? Red, red, red eye. Dead eye. Something. No, it, because it's it came from bullet Max Payne. Oh, bullet time. Bullet time. Did they trademark that? Yeah, I believe they no did. Way. Yeah. Huh. So they have bullet time, which I assume will be in this too, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I just want to know what weird stuff I can get up to at pubs. This is yeah. this is strange. I'm very curious to see what the UI looks like and what the sort of fonts they go with are. I know that's like it's very strange. But like, I mean, looking at GTA Five, it's all very clean. It's all like it's they kind of they made those menus. Obviously, they're meant to look like a you know modern very because they match the wall yeah they're all kind of you're all sort of looking at it in a smartphone or whatever Mm -hmm. um but for a world like red dead to kind of get in there and you're looking at like a rustic like i don't know like you know tombstone pizza type map where it's just like all like the burnt edges and it's like they do rely on the phone a lot Mm -hmm. Uh, i wonder what their alternative is to that because you know even if you're playing gta 5 and you want to jump into online you go through your phone to do everything and it really feels like you're just holding the thing and doing it i wonder how they do that with red dead on just give them a phone and just not just give them a phone we had we had an asset already it's fine (laughs) he actually Uh, gets thousands of carrier pigeons just (laughs) constantly (laughs) harassing him just just Falcon. Press the next D pad option no, and it just a new one in. Yeah. You're right. That is a really good question. Like how do they how do they sort of modernize mission structure? I mean, is it just yeah. like anti modernize it? Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, anti modernize it. GPS totally makes sense in GTA five. Right. Mm-hmm. Does not make sense in Red Dead. Like you mm. gotta kinda you I gotta, think there's liberties you'll have to take. Like, I mean, yeah. maybe you'll get wanted mail you know it'll be like a poster or something somebody hands you an old parchment that says like this is what you got to do in town how do you how do you drop into online though like does it go back to just the way it was in the first red dead where yeah i mean like, that's that's what i'm saying online. is I, i'm curious about the ui and the systems yeah. like that i don't know if they'll go into it in this trailer i'm amazed we've talked about this trailer this much without the trailer actually coming out so it's a rock style game yeah, yeah. again uh IGN Live Wednesday, May 2nd, 7.45 a.m. Pacific, 10.45 a.m. Eastern, 3.45 in the U.K. Uh, so tune in for that. Everyone's going to be hanging out and kind of talking about that. And then, of course, next week, I'm sure we'll have plenty to say about Red Dead. In the meantime, I have some breaking news for both of you regarding big, huge, ambitious video games. Um, CD Projekt Red, the studio behind The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt, has announced they're bringing an RPG to E3 this year. Wow. This is like the third time we've had Cyberpunk confirmed for E3. They were like, yeah, we're showing something. And it's not so, Gwent. We're like, all right, it's Cyberpunk. We get it. I like that they're they're being like, yeah, it's an RPG. And it's like, we're all like, Cyberpunk? Finally? Give us Cyberpunk 2077. We want that. And we're, she's, they're going to show up and be like, it's a standalone story about the adventures of Siri, <laughs> the Witcher's daughter. Okay, so. I would be totally cool with that also. Oh, complete. I mean, I yeah. can see your hair, yes. Uh, but no, like... Um, Cyberpunk's been kind of radio silent for the most part. Except their, for that one tweet. Their tweet po- Twitter popped up and they said, beep. What, beep. Like, oh, this People thing, were like, like, oh, a, they're trying to keep their account active. Garbage. Mm-hmm. Not how Twitter works. No. no. They, I think thing. that was the sound of a computer <laughs> starting up. Um, I'm so excited about this game. I also, it kind of hit me. Uh, I believe we've, I, I believe in an earnings call, they said that this would definitely release before June 2019. And I read somewhere, I don't know how much of this is just like insane people speculating. Uh, I read somewhere that because the, I think the Polish government, uh, helped fund the development of this game by mm. giving them like five million dollars. There is actually sort oh. of a deadline for them delivering on that, mm. and it has to come out sometime in 2019. Wow! But what if it comes out this year? No. What Please if it comes no. out? What if it comes out this year? <laughs> what if, too much what if they? What if they pull like a big old, a big old Bethesda move, and they're like, Damn. Cyberpunk 2077 comes out in November? Or I mean, I if say- maybe if it's <sighs> July. Like, but that's not happening. Just anything coming out alongside Red Dead scares me for whatever that is. Like, I'm worried about Bethesda this year because they keep being dumb and releasing very, very good video games at the end of the year and competing with things they shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Don't release Wolfenstein near Call of Duty. Don't do it. Why do you keep doing it? That's true. It's like, it I'm worried like, about you guys. It seems like they do fine, though. I mean, they haven't, they haven't been I'm, selling as well as they'd hoped, mm-hmm. which is like, well, yeah, because you keep releasing them at a bad time of year. I'm really excited about the idea of this E3 finally being the year, and I've been saying this most of my career, that companies come out and they're like, like, and that's coming out this fall. I mean, Bethesda is excellent. Does. Yeah, Bethesda is great. I mean, there is they have they're sitting on something. It's entirely possible that they're like, hey, everybody, Elder Scrolls Six. I would think uh, they probably have Willow Tomb or something. At least you know, the game two is. games coming out this year. Yeah, it's probably a mobile game coming out. Yep, they will they will do that, and it just depends on timing. Yep, like Cyberpunk, I totally want to play. I'm very excited about it. I just started playing The Witcher Three again, and it's incredible. Yeah, it continues to be incredible. That is even a though phenomenal it's game. Four years old. Uh, I mean, my whole thing with with CD Projekt is is that they're Looking at what they've made, like they start out with Witcher One, which was a PC exclusive. I, I believe that it. was running in the Kotor Two engine. Oh. Like they, they, it was a, it was a kind of a glorified mod in a lot of ways, and it was based on the series of books that nobody had read. It was and it a did, dumb, fun video game. It did well enough. Yeah, it was a made, very good. That they video made game. two, and two kind of came out, and everyone was like, "What's this? Mm-hmm. This is impressive." And then 
they took everything that they made off of two and they put it into three, and you three made is stunning. One and of the just, best games ever made. Yeah, exactly. And so if that's their commitment, I mean, the fact that these guys have effectively made four games. I mean, no, they've actually made more than that. But I mean, in 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 the kind of the modern discussion, like we didn't know who they were before before they put out The Witcher. Too, well, basically. they did incredible. Which I have Ryan, yeah. no doubt Cyberpunk will be a good game, but my concern with if it comes out this year is competing with Red Dead. It's another open world game too. Like they've said, it's an open world yeah. RPG. I'm I like, mean, that I sucks don't... for us, mm-hmm. but like, I don't know. It's sort of flip a coin. What do you like better, think, Cowboys or Cyberpunk? I'm Cyborgs? worried about them. Well, no, yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, we keep thinking about new game releases. If you guys watch NPD every month, half the games on that list are five years old. Like the last month's so NPD, GTA. it's GTA and Mario Kart were two of the best selling games at the top ten. So, and you throw in, uh, I believe Kirby was at the top last time, and Breath of the Wild as well was in the top mm-hmm. twelve or something like that. Nintendo's putting out Smash Brothers. So, Rockstar will have two games in probably the top five of the NPD for the next five years. Red Dead will probably ebb and flow a little di- differently than GTA. I don't think it'll be quite as successful. I don't think so, but I mean. What can be, right? I mean, GTA 6 will be the next game that's quite as successful. Yeah. But you're looking at, so two Rockstar games in the top 10 of the MPD. Call of Duty's coming out. Uh, then you also have whatever Nintendo does, which is probably, you know, they'll have Smash Brothers, Mario Kart with another millions of units there. That leaves about, what, three or four spots in the top 10. So anything outside of that, you're basically competing with yourself or getting crushed. So yeah, what's the value there? Yeah, that's why it's kind of a bad year for Cyberpunk to come out. I I mean, I think they're kind of looking at a different calendar than us. You know, we're all looking at this, you know, yearly stuff. But they're, I mean, they're thinking, they have, so they have like a, a ton of support from the, the Polish government mm-hmm. because they're, and they just opened a new studio. And, uh, I heard they, well, like, I, if, if international relations, like if people come, like ambassadors from different countries, they give them a copy of They the gave Witcher Obama 3. a copy of Witcher 2. That's and he was like, thanks, that's great. I uh, I only have a Wii. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. But uh, no, I, I think that I think that they're, you know, based on what they've made and how they've how they've approached this, the fact that they announced Cyberpunk six years ago this month, I think. Mm-hmm. Um they I think they're they take their time and I think they understand that things like this are kind of worth the wait and also that this is I think this is kind of going to be the be-all end-all for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think this game's going to come out. And they've said that it's not going to have any microtransactions or anything. I think mm-hmm. they also were very committed to being like, yeah, we made a really good game. Uh, if you'd like a really good game, please buy our game. And people are like, I like your attitude. I'll buy your game. Yeah. Yeah. No, that uh, works. It's weird. That that actually works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think Rockstar gets it too. Um, so, I mean, on that note, I think that if... I don't know. I could see it. I could see Cyberpunk being like an early, you know, 2019. Yeah, yeah I was yes. gonna say Q1 2019, uh, like a February, February title. That would be cool. Give yeah. it plenty of room to breathe. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I don't know. They're in a position. They're kind of a darling. Like they've basically they made one of the best games ever, and they're like, hey, uh, we want to make an even bigger game uh, with much more people working on it, and uh, we're really committed to doing this thing. It's a brand new IP. Uh, it's I not, mean, it's not based on books. Yeah, I, sort of. But you know, mm-hmm. I, I would, I would, I would wager that 99 percent of the people that that bought into The Witcher had no idea about the books or anything like that. No, That's, no, no, totally. But the thing is with The Witcher, and I'd have to go back and look, I don't remember what it went head-to-head with, but I feel like it had some room to breathe. Well, that year was Metal Gear Solid and Fallout. Yeah. So it was like a big year a big of year. open-world RPGs, yeah. all of which sold well and reviewed well. Mm-hmm. It's just that none of them were rock stars. <laughs> so no, it's like that's, no, no. If you get Call of Duty to move... Mm-hmm. It's a big deal, mm-hmm. right? And it's just I don't know. This this year is like broken because there's a rock star. Well, the other yeah. thing we're, we're not really accounting for is the I mean the PC market is another part mm-hmm. of it. I yeah. think. Does NPD count like Steam numbers? Um, I believe yeah, sure. It would be hard to because right. it's national. Yeah, it's hard to quantify that. It's, yeah, it's also because that's I would argue where the least sort of physical units are being sold across any platform mm-hmm. because most people have been all digital on PC for a decade now. Yeah, and yeah. I mean you know CD Projekt Red is they're very they're very you know, PC centric. Yeah. They've always kind of put that stuff first. And, and so uh, the reason I bring up what The Witcher 3 went to head head to head with is because I yeah. think that while these games do have a very strong long tail, it's also tremendously important to get a really big push right out the jump because it creates fantastic word of mouth. Like that's the kind of thing where for a very long time people are like, you gotta play this, you gotta play this. Like that's most how of the, the Witcher 3 succeeded yeah, for sure. The Witcher 3, like the the viral marketing that came through that game came from fans. Yeah. You know, that that was fans inherently and they didn't have to pay a dollar for that, which is good. So what happens when you make a great video game. Mm-hmm. People go, This is really good. I want you to play this video game, and then other people tell you about it and they're like, yeah, Does it have any of that icky meow. in it? And like, no, 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 none, none of that. Of that. Yeah. Even, I think I think Cyberpunk's gonna be the same way. Yeah, yeah. totally. I would think even God of War is probably sold like 20% of its copies just by people loving it so much and not even for marketing. Probably Horizon as well, honestly. Yeah, I think, um, 
And I, I believe both of those games benefited from having some room to breathe. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, Far Cry conversation both died came out down. At great times. Ian. Horizon right before Zelda took took all the Even air out of Detroit, the room. It's yeah. coming out. Well, it'll be May by the time everyone's watching this. So it's yeah. coming out the end of this month, next to almost nothing. And I think I feel like we are five years away from every single month being nonstop <laughs> insane for video games. But so far, people haven't totally figured it out yet. So still, if you How get in, Capcom's figured out the January yeah. release thing. Yes. Ubisoft's pretty good about pacing. They do a February generally. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I f- yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> like I think one AAA every month sounds cool. Oh my I think God, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and then by the time the you know holidays roll around, you put out like the special edition, mm-hmm. you know, spooky spooky game of the year edition or whatever. Yeah, let, let all Nightmare. that let all the annual dudes fight over November and October. You know, yeah, it's, I'm it's not like gonna the, buy those. Yeah, it's the same. It's like the same five games every every fall. You mm-hmm. know, um, that's fine. Fight over it, and it's not really much of a fight because Call of Duty comes in and becomes the best selling game of the year. Yeah. Which and FIFA. Might not happen this year. I'd be actually be amazed hmm. if Call of Duty outsells Red Dead this year. It's so interesting because, again, you know, trying to remove ourselves from the industry, mm-hmm. do more people know the name Grand Theft Auto than people who know the name Rockstar? Right. Yes, right? I would think more people are familiar with Grand Theft yes. Auto than they are with Rockstar. Yeah. So Red Dead Redemption falls mm-hmm. somewhere below that. This like, is also, this is stupid, but like Grand Theft Auto, the title explains it involves cars. Red Dead Redemption is, doesn't have cars in it, yeah. so like I think for some people they're like, no, it doesn't. Have, you can't drive around. I don't. I don't care. Redemption's no, lame. There's I don't no want machine any of that. guns. Get no, that out of here. Alana, you're totally onto something. I mean, if you're looking at brand recognition of Call of Duty versus Red Dead, new mm-hmm. word. I mean, what does that mean to people? To right? us, it's like yeah. the biggest thing ever. Of course, yeah, community yeah. like who knows about video games, it's a huge deal. But to most people, people know Grand Theft Auto Five because it gets announced by the New York Times yeah. and covered on every major news network ever mm-hmm. because it's the prostitute murdering simulator. Yeah, well, there's, but even then, that's exactly it. they talk about it. You're not yeah. going to be like, here's the sweet western where you play liars dice in a pub. Yeah, that's the like, no, you know, good, no, no press is bad press effectively. Is that, It like, totally worked for Grand Theft Auto because when I was a kid, I was like, I don't know what it is, but I yeah. want it. No, I think there's a lot of, I mean, when that's you- That's actually, that's great viral marketing is when you're like, your parents come in, you're like, you cannot play this game. And you're like, well, what's this game now? Hold on, mm-hmm. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think there's a significant portion of, because I remember going, I was I was in GameStops a lot more when GTA 4 and 5 first came out. Mm. And there's a significant portion of kids who like turn 12 or 13 who are just like, is anyone looking? Yeah, I want that prostitute game. <laughs> My mom bought uh, the GTA trilogy like box set that had three Vice City and San Andreas for me when I was twelve. Oh my god! And it's fine. Wow, <laughs> those games, those <laughs> games are fine. so they're so like cartoony and harmless now. It's yeah, never problem. Yeah. Everything was fine. I wouldn't mm-hmm. encourage like that for every family, but mom was like, no, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Five, yeah. It's a little bit edgier, but you know, you only did five yeah. years in state prisons. Yeah, though. yeah, it's like not a big deal. So yeah, I, I mean, it. I'm so just just based on what we've seen, I think even with with Tomb Raider, uh, it, it's nice to see that kind of. Companies are sort of keeping keeping stuff in in the oven until it's ready to serve. You know, it's yeah. they're, they're not they're not doing the long tail stuff. They're being but like, this approach is my favorite. I think it's Nintendo's so good, yeah. doing a really great job this cycle. Ubisoft's also pretty good at it too. Like mm-hmm. I feel like they've improved. They're getting better. Yeah. Yeah, and it's who's got the longest tail on things right now? I mean, Rockstar is obviously a pretty long one, but they don't yeah. they don't oversell. It's Sony. I yeah, mean, yeah, right? Sony. I mean, Sony just gave Santa it's Monica funny. five years to make a God of War, which is pretty. Goddamn amazing if you think about it. I mean, yeah. that is not, that's a big IP, but that's not necessarily like GTA, mm-hmm. you know, Zelda. That's like, not. Days Gone, when is that coming out? We don't know. Right. Last right. of Us is probably next year. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can feel, that, last year, I can so feel that, getting better. that fatigue. I like, I like Last of Us because we, we haven't seen. We haven't seen much. We haven't seen yeah. anything. So yeah. I don't know what that game looks like. Uh, Spider-Man, I think, is they're, they're pacing it just right, you know? It could almost get drowned, but it's not going to. I it's going to be. It's also yeah. so different than anything else that we're talking about here. Right. It's true. You know, I mean, it's yes. Sp- it's, it's, it's Spider-Man. It's an open it's world insomnia. game. Yeah. Yeah. Making a Spider-Man yeah. game. Love Spider-Man. It's, it's an open world game in, like, the craziest of senses. Like, very different yeah. than something. And in an era where we don't yeah. have Occam games yep. as well. So it's like. So, I mean, fine. that being said, this fall has a lot of, it has a lot of, like, I feel like, very safe bets and a lot of total question marks, mm-hmm. and that's kind of exciting. So I'm I'm pretty stoked at E3. I, I love going to Bethesda's press conference every year. Like I, that's the yeah. only one where I've been in the room every time mm. that I've been, at least. And it's like it's so exciting because every time you're like, oh my god, that's out in three months. Yep. What? Yeah. Or three and minutes. I love so many of their <laughs> franchises. Oh, it's like it's right now. It's on your oh, phone nuts. as you speak. I yeah. a lot so of much Fallout fun. Shelter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, I, I love those. So. Yeah, on the subject of, um, we mentioned Liar's Dice, we mentioned uh, Gwent. Um, mm-hmm. 
this this hit me the other day. I was uh, I was sitting at home and I was screwing around watching TV, and my my fiance has been playing uh, Stardew Valley on her Switch, but she hasn't been playing Stardew Valley, the game where you farm and do that. She's been playing the game within the game, which is like a a, a Smash TV knockoff called like Rise of the Prairie King or huh. something, mm-hmm. and she's been playing it obsessively. And it does sound like her. My reaction is like, what are you doing? There's all kinds of full games you could be playing instead of like this like little mini game within a game. And I'm like, it, that that's that idea of like, oh, you're playing the game wrong. Go play, go go play. You know, broaden your horizons, try new mm-hmm. things. But then I'm also like, but she's having fun. And if video games as a whole are, you know. A waste of time, a fun waste of time, but still, like you're not actually accomplishing real world things. You're just you're kind of consuming a, a fantasy world. It's escapism. If they're already a waste of time, and then games have waste of times within them, what are your what are your what are your go tos for that? Like, what are the ones that if you if you didn't have any if you didn't have any of that like inhibition to be like, oh, I should actually go on and play another game, or I should go mm. you know do the main story mm-hmm. mission? What's the little diversion you'd be you'd be most quick to I, go to? I got super hooked in the Resident Evil 4 Mercenaries mode, which is basically like an arcade mode where you're it's time attack. Mm. Um, and that's weird because also in that game is a shooting gallery where you collect uh, like Japanese bottle cap toy versions of all the characters in the game. And it's in the actual game. So like you'll be in like a mansion and you'll turn a corner and that guy's like, what do you want, stranger? And then you're like, oh, I just want to shoot some like toys for an hour. And he's like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Save the president's daughter later. Yeah. And you're like, all right. And so like you just... You just like hone your weapons and like, you know, get really good. And depending on how many points you get, like you have this sub menu where you collect like toys. And I'm like, I love Resident Evil 4. I love collecting toys. So like this feels perfect. And there's that sense of urgency of everything happening outside of you, which like, you know, not to bring up God of War again, but I really think that's like one of the coolest things that game does is that there's no true sense of urgency in that game. The plot of that game is about like, burying a dead person effectively who is already yeah. dead. My mm-hmm. boyfriend actually just started playing it and he when he plays games he like play, he doesn't play a ton but when he does he will play all of it. Like mm. he'll do everything in it to the extent where he'll like have finished a quest before someone has given it to him and he's already got the item type oh, wow. thing. And with God of War I'm I'm wondering and I've been talking to him about this does doing the side quests mean that the pacing of the story is hurt? Like I don't know if that that game is better if you play it start to finish narrative wise mm-hmm. rather than like jump off and do side stuff for that game so specifically. I, I like powered through the main storyline and that too. and going back to do side quest stuff feels incredibly tedious so mm. i think it's almost you're meant to get kind of sidetracked and go off on off yeah the i mean your son then, like, is their relationship wouldn't progress and well atreus is, is is straight up saying like hey we could go finish the story or we could go su- do some yeah. side stuff like he's he's your little like navi in your ear being like oh let's go over here yeah. let's do that yeah um yeah. i feel like all the stuff in there though actually like it it didn't feel like a silly mini game thrown in there. It's all like pretty much either side quests or it's like maybe maybe collectibles mm-hmm. or doing, you know, it's, it, it all kind of fits the lore. Mm-hmm. There's no like mini games of shooting galleries well, or anything. There's right. that section of like, there's that like the sort of like poison fog roguelike section right, in right. there, which I think comes close to this conversation. Mm-hmm. And there's like, there's boss boss mode stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at stuff like Geometry Wars, That that's a game that, was originally like a loading screen. Yeah. Well, it was also in Project Gotham Racing, yeah. which is what I was going to say. Yeah. I played a lot of that in Project Gotham Racing. Gwent is a big one, which I'm very I'm very bad at Gwent. So that's I still what's really I've played a lot of Gwent in the Witcher. Mm-hmm. Gwent, I I've I, I hate trading card games. Like I've never been into them and Gwent managed to completely get me yeah. to the point where I was like you know, yeah, I, I would pour pour time into playing that. Mm-hmm. Like oh, I've got to get the the bloody barons like special collectible trading card. I think it works. That they wouldn't have made the standalone if they didn't see how much hours people were putting into Gwent. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's just like it worked. I don't know why I like it so much, but I really, really do. But I'm sure there's a million examples to answer this exact question that I just can't think of. I've done a lot of dumb, time wasty <laughs> in video games. Yeah. I'm like what? Are I mean, I think it's just so funny because there is that there is that feeling of like oh, I can't I can't trifle with the claw machine in Yakuza. I've got to go and beat up the bad guys. I'm, I don't want to mm-hmm. waste time here. And it's like it's all wasting time. It's yeah. all a virtual pursuit. There's no actual. You're not actually. If I was trying to actually spend time doing stuff, I'd do the laundry in real yeah. life. You know, <laughs> but like I don't know. In, in in GTA, for instance, like I don't know. There's darts. You know, there's like you can go. Oh, I did go. tons of the GTA stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think they get that, and it's it's yeah. kind of funny how like I mean, even dating in GTA is one of those things that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily move the plot forward or net you any cool weapons or guns, but it's really fun. Mm. Yeah, know? and it's, I mean, I think that the best games kind of understand that people are going to get distracted and are going to go off the beaten path. Like, there's a whole, there's, um, 
what is it called? Real Estate Royale in, in Yakuza 0. And like there's a bunch of side miss sub stories and side stuff I didn't do in that game because I was trying to, you know, get through it and find out what happens. And of all of that stuff, the one thing I really wanted to go back and do is play the real estate market. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I adore games that let you play with stocks in that way specifically. Yeah. Like GTA did a really great job of that too, but like games where you can specifically like decide housing prices or Fable's a really good example, obviously an Xbox exclusive, but you can buy a certain weapon from a trader and then find another trader who you can sell it to for hire and like mm -hmm. just play the economy like that. Love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, Especially that's a good time. Especially if it's real estate, it's even better. I actually like the main character of the first Watch Dogs game is, is a dork. Uh, it is. <laughs> My long lost that, brother. That guy. But uh, the there are AR games in that game that you can play on your phone that sort of like just project this kind of Space Invaders style game onto the world you're in, hmm. which is, do you guys remember those? I remember that. No. Yeah, it's really interesting. So you basically pull up your phone and it just projects these, these hologram AR games that you can start playing like in the street. Hmm. And you can do it wherever you want. And I think you have to unlock them and you can unlock more of them. Uh, and it's really cool. I like I like video games that have video games in them. You yeah. know? Or sometimes when a character in a video game plays another video game and he has to, you know, that's just like in the corner of something. Yeah. Like I thought actually when I first walked up to an arcade cabinet in Far Cry 5 that they'd let me do that. And I was like, oh my God, they have Far Cry arcade. That's so cool. And it was just like, it kicks you into a different mode, which oh, is still yeah, fun. Yeah, but. Wolfenstein has that where you can play arcade games in Wolfenstein yeah. and it's really cool. And there was actually, I've unfortunately forgotten the name of it, but a PSVR game at PAX where... The idea was you were in a classroom, and I think it was like a British classroom, you have a teacher, and you're trying to play a game on like Game Boy. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't actually say Game Boy on right. it, but you mm -hmm. have to hide it from the teacher. So you are playing this game in this like 2D space, and they're like, how do we get a 2D game, like a, a retro looking thing, into VR? And that's the idea, is you're trying to play this game while also hiding it from the teacher. So it's like an arcade game with a layer of stealth. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's really, that's yeah, really funny. Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah. I love that kind of stuff. I think that there's ways to play with it too. I love in, in as far as like sort of, you know, diversions and stuff, and you know, big open world games obviously like direct the player to how to do it. I love in GTA how there's an entire like sort of series of submissions where Franklin has to go and like, do assassinations that are all about playing the stock market. Those and are great. I love so mm -hmm. much about stocks. Yeah, Lester or whoever is like, hey, if you want to invest in uh, stock in Apple or fruit, iFruit or whatever it's called, like now might be a good time. Yeah. And then right. you like, I don't know, you hear on the news about it. Like that's so that's so insane. Yeah. And like they great. managed to wait. I was like, wait, did you manage to make me do stocks? Mm -hmm. Like you made me do the Wall Street stuff. Because I remember doing that and being like, why didn't I do this in school? Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Why am I learning this from GTA Five and I didn't know this in high school? Like, I was I was actually pretty bummed out in Uncharted Four where it was only like a vertical slice Crash of the Bandicoot. original Crash Bandicoot. You could play it the been, whole thing. Yeah, it would have been really awesome yeah. if they had the whole thing in there, even if it was through the filter of their television mm -hmm. with them sitting in front of I it. I liked that. Yeah, yeah. that would There's have been something really cool about that. Yeah. Um, a similar note, but it's, I mean, it's not really a playable game, but, and we keep going back to GTA, but GTA had entire like stand up comedy specials in it that you could, really? yeah, you can go to people's apartments and just sit down and watch stand up. Wow. It's crazy. Do you I watched a that? lot of the TV in GTA. Yeah. Like all the time. Yeah. One of the channels just had like, like 30 minute long stand up specials. And I was like, wow. all right, cool. That's insane. And mm -hmm. that's insane that. that that game came out, what is it, five years ago now? Yeah. No, it's longer than that. Five? Yeah. Five was 2013, I think. Four is about to turn ten. Good God! Yeah. Okay, so it's probably about right, and, yeah. and th there's still stuff in it that I didn't know about. Like, mm -hmm. That's you can, crazy. You can still play those games and have a great time. You just can't listen to David Bowie on the radio. That's the only thing. Wait, what? <laughs> they they pulled a bunch of licenses for GTA Four. Oh. They were like, oh yeah, that's weird. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're listening to the show or watching the show, let us know what your favorite games in games are. I like it. Yeah, I just think that's it's like fun to think about because it's like it's there's so many games out there and it's always kind of in a hurry to get to the next one. Mm -hmm. But like, was it yeah. Namco for a minute trademarked? The, the basically the ability to play a video game on a loading screen. They had that patented, game. and they had yeah. that, and it sucked because the only it would like there was a mini game where you you'd fly around Dragon as Goku Ball. and yeah. pick up, yeah. you know, pick up Senzu beans or something. Yeah. And then there was like some soccer game that had it, but mm -hmm. they didn't do enough of that, you know. No, I like how I like how Assassin's Creed like sort of kind of ripped that off. It would like, oh, like run every around time I would run. Stuff. That's yeah, the thing. It's this like is, I would always keeps run. you keeps you moving. You know, yeah. this is a tremendously deep cut, but uh, there was a game for the original Nintendo called Blades of Steel, which is yeah. a hockey game, um, and it had a like full robust fighting, like I almost love, yeah, the fighting in it was great. But in the second period, in between the second and third periods in this hockey game, because it was made by Konami, one out of like two times they would kick you to this like this screen where it's like an animation of like a bear shooting a goal and you'd be like, oh, that's great. Good for you. But the other times it would be an entire level of Gradius 
Hmm. Like really? the, ver- the horizontal shooting game. I don't remember. And my that brother at all. was bad at it, but he loved hockey and sports. So he would just like yell somewhere in the house, like, Bry, come downstairs. And I'd run across the whole house and he'd be like, play this for me. And I'd play and I'd like <laughs> beat it. And you don't get any points for it. It doesn't make your score go higher. But he'd be like, thanks. And I'd be like, cool. <laughs> and then he'd That's go so back fun. to playing hockey. That's awesome. Yeah. I got really hooked on the um in, in Final Fantasy 15. There's these like god awful arcade ca- games that are, I think, I think they put out a free to play like pinball. Mm-hmm. like mobile game and then they made those the arcade games in all the cafes you go to so they're just like they're just f- f- like crappy video games yeah. and I'm like I gotta go save you the can actually still playing. play them on mobile yeah mm-hmm. which is nuts uh, anyway I just wanted to have fun and talk about that for yeah. a bit um, a new month has started so that means new PlayStation Plus games this month uh, PS4 users get Beyond Two Souls which is good because that's just in time for uh, Detroit Become Human which is coming which out end of the month which if you pre-order it you get Heavy Rain for free also so yeah you so can do a you oh free. really yeah but I can't think of much worse than playing those three games back to back. You'd probably get tired of it. I think you'd yeah, get real sick of that play I'm style. I'm super stoked because I never, yeah. I never got a chance to play Beyond Two Souls. I think I like previewed it a couple times and then just, and then just missed it. And yeah. I love it because it sounds like, it sounds like something horrible I would make up on, a, like on a podcast as a joke. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, it just Ellen Page and her ghost friend are friends with Willem Dafoe, who's like a creepy. But child it, psychologist. the problem is that, that it also controls badly. Yeah, that's. Well, I, I don't know. Deadly no, Premonition is right. my favorite game. What am I talking about? Yeah. No, it's um, it's incredibly, and this sounds like such a softball of a compliment, but it's incredibly ambitious in the way the story unfolds. Um, but I think it's overly ambitious in the way it's hindered by its controls. But it's still definitely worth uh, playing and experiencing because the sort of different environments they bring you to and the way you're interacting with them is like one of them's a dinner party. The other one's like this sort of like Call of Duty training facility. Like mm-hmm. it gets really crazy and I don't know if it fully like gels, but there's a mm. lot of interesting stuff in there. It's like this bizarre mixtape that, and then Hans Zimmer did music apparently. All right. Quantic um, Dream are yeah. very ambitious as a studio. It's definitely the kind of game where if somebody was like, should I pay for this? I'd be like, I don't know. And they're like, what if it was free on my PlayStation this month or based on how little, you know, $5 yeah, a yeah. month? Mm-hmm. I'd be like, yes, go for it. Then. Yeah. I um, I really wish they'd do a comedy. Like I feel like their their games oh, always no. succeed. They do a lot of unintentional comedy. Exactly. Yeah. I can't even imagine or, what I mean, David Cage writing a comedy would be. Really, like. just anybody who makes these like wonderfully ambitious games. But like I don't know. I f- I feel like the stuff that always resonates with me is the sort of smaller, more relatable. Like oh, you're gonna open someone's drawer and like look around or you know read their diary or you know it's a there's like isn't there a whole thing where you help Ellen Page? You you're the ghost and you help Ellen Page get ready for a date. Yeah. 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 That sounds like so like make a whole game that's like that. <laughs> like the ghost date. The <laughs> there's a children's birthday party. Yeah, like that's that sounds... you haunt. That is, I swear to God, it's the hardest I've ever. It's one of the hardest times I've ever laughed at work. Yeah, like that I did, sounds. Great. I did a let's play with Greg Miller. You can probably find that somewhere. Did you guys ever play Murdered Soul Suspect? Is that the yes. one you can turn into a cat? I uh, maybe. Yes, uh, I did. I have play a weird a fondness that. for that game. It's yeah. you're a ghost and you're trying to solve your own your own murder. Right. Oh yeah, I remember that. And there is a lot of like weird, funny, possessed stuff in that okay. that's like you'll possess something silly and everyone reacts to it in like a really dramatic way mm-hmm. and like it's intentionally silly like i i don't know it's like that game's a solid seven but i enjoyed it a lot this nice. one is dead serious but so when you when you push it and get done with it it's just so it's well, just, you, you guys haven't played deadly premonition right no i haven't uh, no which is why that game's so good is that it's technically a very serious theme but it doesn't ever take itself seriously mm. so everything that dumb that happens in that game is just shockingly stupid like the characters don't make any sense there's this one character who's my favorite who is missing a shoe and just talks about how her pot is getting cold at all times you'll like go visit her in a mansion and she's like my pot is getting cold and that's like kind of all she ever talks about there's the only normal person in the town Mm -hmm. tries to play chess with you that's all he wants to do and you never get to play chess with him okay fair enough just like hey you uh, got time for chess and you're like no I don't I'm solving a pot anyway we gotta get back on track here Uh, Beyond Two Souls for this month for PlayStation Plus people there's also a game called King oddball which looks sort of like um somewhere between rock of ages and like a really sad angry birds clone but it looks like it could be like a fun little puzzler uh and then rayman legends which Ooh. brian you've okay. played a million times right oh yeah yeah, yeah. um i would probably say this th- this is the best side scrolling platforming game on playstation 4 hmm. i'll go out and say that um it's gorgeous it's multiplayer um it's very lax in terms of um progression it's a lot like new super mario brothers in that like 
you can play with two other people and then one of them can die and then they pop up in a bubble and you tag them back in or they can intentionally bubble. There are no lives in this game. It's effectively about just getting from point A to point B, collecting all the stuff you can. Uh, but the bosses are really fun. There's like really it's awesome. really like, pretty. It's really Good pretty. sound design. Yeah. Hey, great hand painted and hand illustrated characters and backgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, my one thing I don't really like about this game is that there's this character Murphy that they introduce mm. that basically See is See that this, big blue goon? He's like yeah. a shitty bug. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes you interact with the environment to like sort of like slash things and touch things. And it's 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 based around touch controls because this was a Wii U exclusive game. Oh yeah. But then at the last minute they looked at the profit margins on that system and then ported it everywhere, which good for you because now you get to play it on PlayStation. But it's got some weird sort of just mm. icky stuff that brought over from there. That said, uh, it's the sequel to Rayman Origins, and it's got a just ton of levels from that game hidden mm -hmm. in it that you can unlock. So in terms of value here, if you want a good platforming game, there are like dozens and dozens and dozens of great levels here. So it's yeah, awesome. and it, like I said, you know, it's like just you just click the button and you download it. It's in your library forever yeah. as long as you're a PlayStation yeah. Plus subscriber. So grab that. Get cool. that. So uh, a couple games out this week. Uh, one of them I got to play. It's called City of Brass. It is a first-person sort of uh, procedurally generated roguelite that's set in this kind of Arabian Nights setting, which every th every step of that sounds like something that I wouldn't enjoy. Mm -hmm. But I messed around with it a little bit, and it's actually like it's like surprisingly fun. Oh, cool. Um, it's The controls are like a little bit floaty. But basically, you just go through this this stupid like Aladdin maze, and there's skeletons everywhere, and you and you have a whip, and so you can like you can like whip skeletons and like pull them towards you, and if they go in a spike trap, they explode, and it's just I don't know, it's cool, it's yeah, it's like one of those games if you want to just I don't know, grind away and and get a bunch of loot, and you know I think there's like leaderboards and stuff. Um, I think it was made by a small studio. I want to say it's Australian. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know it's there's a lot of games that come out, and you can't get to them all, but. Mm -hmm. uh, it was nice to get a minute with that. Uh, Killing Floor Incursion is a PSVR game set in the world of Killing Floor. If you wanted to get closer to those just god awful things in those games, those I just games didn't really are, like Killing Floor. Do you want to have those things no. on your face though? No, I don't. You don't want to have the the blood the blood men all up in your not quite right near your eyes. I wonder what kind of game it is. Uh, it's I think it's just kind of your usual sort of uh, PSVR arcade type game. Yeah. Um, I, you get all the different weapons. I think it says you get like axes. I, don't, I haven't I haven't played enough of those games because they. Are abhorrent looking. Yeah, I quite like the floor. I, th I think it was. Uh, why do you keep <laughs> killing it? Such a violent floor. Uh, I think it was. I want to say it was Tim Rogers at, at Kotaku who said, "Like you have no idea how much work it takes to make a game full of so many ugly things." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like that's that's kind of it. It's very much like kind of Image Comics meets you know '90s horror. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then if that's too scary for you, there's also a game called Pirate Flight VR, which is called it's a game for everyone. Uh, and it's a, you, you're a little cartoon airplane, and you fly around through rings, and it looks Sweet. looks very chill. What does it have to do with pirates? Uh, I think you are a pirate in the plane. Sweet. Yeah, I don't know. It's I like it. It's out. Uh, there's a game VR. called <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, a game called uh, Day Dayland? Dyland? I don't know. Dayland. Uh, Dayland. Uh, this looks kind of cute. Dayland. It's, uh, it's got this sort of, um, it's kind of like an adventure RPG, but um, you're on sort of a pl uh, small planet like you'd see in Mario Galaxy. Right. Uh, so you can kind of run all the way around it, and it mm. looks like you collect carrots and things like that. I just kind of watched the trailer online. Um, looks cute. That's cool. Uh, Guns of Icarus Alliance is a, it's been on PC for a while. It's a steampunk. PvP PvE airship game, which I could totally see if if there's any uh, PS4 players who felt like they missed out on Sea of Thieves. I feel like that could have some of the same elements of oh, cool. getting on a flying thing or on a ship with your friends and goofing around. Uh, Hive it. Hive Altinum Wars is a 2.5D hero shooter, uh, and then finally Hex Tunnel Touch looks like a Winamp visualization if you were playing it and you couldn't touch the walls or floor. It's just a weird... Hey, it don't say tunnel touch. Tunnel, tunnel touch. I don't like that. That sounds, tunnel, tunnel, sounds very bad. Tunnel touch. Anyway, those are the games that are out this week. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about the Cowboys. Get excited about that. You can find us all on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville. Alana is Charles Anazard. Brian is Agent Bizzle. Uh, and be sure to uh, head over to youtube.com slash IGN Beyond and go subscribe because that's where we put up the videos that you might be watching, or I don't know, what you, I don't know how you consume this. We we put this audio, on every. We have that too. Yeah, we have audio. Have Go want, sub really? subscribe, like, comment, share, do all those things on whatever it is you consume this program on. We appreciate you listening or watching or whatever it is you're doing. We just really, and they always <laughs> tell really us to like, like say the thing at the end of the video. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in a week. And uh, on that note, beyond, beyond, beyond. <laughs>